Dome. I'm running for house seat in District 5. We're looking good. Obviously, we're going to Juno because the interior needs energy and we need jobs. Of course, energy is for everybody in the state. That's what we're here. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a dentist by trade. I grew up in the trades. My dad was a drywaller and a plaster. I did that for 20 years. I'm a licensed airplane mechanic. Worked for Mark Air, Air North. So I've been around. Went to Desert Storm. Spent 11 years in the Air Guard as a crew chief. And we moved on from there. Now, I came from Phoenix a long time ago. I've been in the state 40 plus years, 47 years to be exact. But I tell this story for a reason. And I have a chipped tooth, never had it fixed. Now that tooth was chipped back before I was seven years old. It was chipped because I got in a fight, I was in a gang, believe it or not, in Phoenix, south side of Phoenix. I came home and my mom looked at me and said, you know what, we gotta change our lives. And I'll never forget that because that next day we came home, well, probably about a week later, there was a trailer sitting in our front yard, packed to the gills, and my mom said we're going on a camping trip to Alaska. Well, we've been camping ever since. We've never left. But the point behind that story is this. We're a people of action. That's what we are. We don't sit back. We don't cry about our situation. We do something about it. And that's the way I was raised. That's why I'm going to Juno. Because we're a people of action. We're a Republican Party we should be proud of. We should be proud of what we do. And we need to stand together and we need to unify. But we need to let Alaska know we're a unified party and we're going to get the job done. So that's my three minutes spill. I appreciate you guys and, and get the word out. Most importantly, let's unify. Thank you. A number of years ago, we had seven unchallenged Republicans in the state house. We referred to them as the magnificent seven. They were not terribly engaged because at that time, we didn't have any structure. We had been a permanent minority in the house with the exception of a small Republican Bush coalition in the early 80s for two years. Uh, this year we have 10 unopposed Republicans in the House, and one of them is with us somewhere in the back of the room, Steve Thompson from District 3. Steve, welcome. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Thompson uh, used to be District 10, now we're District 3, and uh, I was really shocked actually to find out that uh, in June that I had nobody running against me, and uh, it, it makes you feel pretty cool, pretty blessed, and uh, pretty honored, and uh, don't take it for granted at all, I, I really feel like uh, there's a lot of work to do, and I want to make sure that my people in my district know that I'm going down there to try to do something for them talked about it. We need to get energy uh, relief here in Fairbanks. I think we're on the cusp of being ready to go to Juno with a plan. Uh, it, it's, it's exciting, but at the same time, we've got to make sure we get ours elected to go down there. Uh, but these are, even in the paper today, talking about their big rallies at Fairbanks, about uh, it's our oil, we want to get all we can get. Well, they, they've got to look at it that uh, it's, it's the entire problem we have with reduced amount of oil in the line is being masked, masked by the high price per barrel of oil at the present time. If barrel was down around $60, $70 a barrel, if oil was down to that price, we'd be in a real problem right now. And unless we do something to get more investment and production off the North Slope, we are going to be in a real pimple. I mean, it's scary as to where we are right now. We could really be in a deficit situation, and we're headed in that direction. So we've got to be able to adjust that oil tax where the, the money will be reinvested in Alaska and we start getting some more oil on that line. I would much rather have 50% of a million barrels a day than 75% of nothing. I mean, you think about it, and that's where we're headed. I mean, we've got to do something, and I think the only way we're going to do it is if we put more ours down there in the Senate and the House vote. And we do it responsibly, though. So this is the exciting part about going down there again. I get to be there for two more years. If we get some few more R's in the Fairbanks area, I think we're going to get another seat on finance, which is going to be huge for the interior. So uh, thank you for all you guys do and you gals. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, you, you get together and you really have a lot of work to do ahead of you. And uh, I hope, hope you have a productive day today. And thank you very much for your support. Four, David Cruz, 
data from the commercial, the thrill of victory or the agony of defeat. Well, every morning I get up because I will not have the agony of defeat. Every morning I work. Every day I do this. And I do it because so many people in this room, so many people in this community have invested in me. So I take that as an honor I can. I'm a real estate broker. I'm used to getting, I'm used to being paid at the very, very end if everything works out right. Having people contribute to me funds to do this 
you about it, a third of the U's and the ends and the sometimes voting R's I'm not going to get. But the two thirds I probably am going to get the majority of them. So I, you know, I'm feeling pretty good about it. So you add the, the and I'm talking about the district that is presently now under Joe Thomas's issue uh, area. Uh, I feel pretty good about it. Pretty good. Uh, I don't want to ignore the North Pole area. Uh, I've served them well. But I don't uh, want to ignore them. So they are going to get uh, touched with several pieces of literature. Uh, they will get some phone calls, and I will write them a first class letter. Now, that's going to be one of the ways I'll encourage them. So, uh, uh, Tammy Wilson and I are really kind of concentrating on that new area. John, John, since we have a camera running, okay, we're doing a lot of details. I'm sorry, I should have told you that before. Oh, the camera's running. Take camera that will, everything will be posted for the Democrats to see immediately. Oh, okay, Democrats, just forget all that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's probably nothing I, that I said that I wouldn't say right in Joe's face. Uh, we did a uh, candidate forum last night at the university. It was, uh, it was not well attended, but uh, we did get some newspapers this morning. Uh, there were several people that called me after that, university students, and said, yes, home run for Cogu. So I was very pleased about that. Uh, the, uh, the forums that we had out of North Pole yesterday, uh, we had, I think, 20 candidates lined up. So it was, you got one minute to answer the answer to the question of the world, you know. But even with that, I thought they handled it pretty good. They gave everybody a shot. Uh, it got it. Uh, for me to show the contrast between me and Joe Thomas, even though that was uh, one way to do it. Uh, he's obviously a big government guy, tax and spend, and he made that pretty clear yesterday. So uh, I was very pleased that I got a chance to show the contrast there. Uh, you know, just uh, four weeks to go, basically, and uh, lots to do. Uh, but I just didn't want you folks to think I don't appreciate it. the money that you got me has bought me the opportunity to uh, answer the kind of the, the misinformation that's going to come out. It cost about uh, 2500 bucks a whack to put out a radio ad up here. And, uh, but I don't want to just go on the defense. And Joe, I'm going on the offense if you listen to me. And so there will be a few uh, uh, challenges that I put out along, this, uh, along with answering some of the questions. So uh, we're doing the best we can. Uh, we're going to work hard. Uh, we got uh, literature drops and sign waving that uh, will show the, the, uh, the force of those who support us. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, please, please know I appreciate all of you have knocked on somebody's door, asked somebody to give, and sent money to those of us who are running. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We have another House Rep candidate joining us for the open seat in the North Pole, Doug Isaacson. My name is Doug Isaacson. I'm currently the mayor of the city of North Pole, and I've had the honor of sitting with you on the State Central Committee years ago. Thank you for your service to our party and ultimately to our state and our nation by doing a conscientious work here. I'm running for House Seat District 1. Uh, it's great that they recognize North Pole and Ileson as the number one district in the state. Uh, we are the number one energy producer right now in the state. Too bad because the Kisti should be even bigger than they are. Uh, we're, we have energy issues up here. We see a reduction of employment even in North Pole at our refineries. The largest refinery in Alaska. We have two refineries, by the way, in our city. And I think part of it is the pricing. We're gouging ourselves and passing the savings on to others, and then those others out, out of state are employing people, sending the product back to our state at a cheaper rate. We need to make sure we incentivize it using our products for our people and make sure that we don't have uh, a catastrophic failure in our economy because then it costs you in your regions. We, uh, we spend a lot of money helping people pay their bills. I, I'm all for making sure we incentivize the private 
own bills and then they don't come to government asking for a handout. Uh, right now, I am asking that we consider the use of royalty oil and reduce the price uh, for the interior until we get natural gas here. We use about 49 million gallons of, of oil a year in the interior. That's only at $2, that's only a $100 million subsidy. The Democrats are saying, well, we need to give uh, a $350 million handout. That's $15 million just in ministry, and, and that'll solve all of our problems. The difference is we need to have something that will uh, sustain and, and stabilize a regional economy. And a reduction of the royalty oil will do that until we get natural gas. It's not a one-time shot. It's the ability to get incentivize uh, investments back again. Because down in Anchorage, how many of you are from Anchorage area or been through there recently? Yeah, quite a few. You guys have been moving to Concord and I applaud you for it. You've got construction cranes everywhere. You look here, the only construction cranes you see in the interior are on a small little slough building a bridge. Uh, and it's a DOT government project. It's a good project we've been working on for 30 years. But it's, it's not going to bring much wealth to the area. We need employment that comes from the private sector. Well, that's what I'm about. That's what I've been about. Uh, I'll continue to work on your behalf. Uh, there's a lot more that can be said, but Randy knows uh, uh, why. I, I never like to waste a, a, a sentence when a paragraph will do. So I appreciate your support.
be able to keep the services that we have and realize that the oil companies are private businesses and we should be supporting them as well as we have to get energy to the interior because that is the number one. We're knocking on doors out there and people are just completely depressed. We don't know how they're going to make it through the winter. They don't see any projects coming. They're tired of all the hot air that we give them and that we go down there and do nothing. And then I remind them of the programs that we have put in place, the rebate program, the winterization program, the Woodstock Change Shop. There are programs right now and we gave 2.7 
here.
just to let you know, Alaska wiretapping laws allow for one party um, confirmation of for hazing. I'm doing this as a favor of having out in the open, just to let you know. If need be, I will have the camera in my pocket and be recording. This is an open meeting to all Republicans. May I point out? Uh, just hold up. If I just may address this, this, this footage that he's uh, capturing right now is being streamed live, so there's no recording. It's going out live. We don't know who's watching it. I think we have to assume that the folks that we don't want parties who are planning are in fact watching our meeting. May, may I point out something just for general identification? Uh, there's been recent, a recent court case in which attorneys for Ron Paul uh, filed, or rather, according to the court, frivolous lawsuit. Part of the findings of the court pointed out and reiterated the constitutional right of political parties to have limited ability to discriminate. Specifically in instances like this, Daniel, we are a private organization. We have a political purpose and we have the right to have meetings and maintain a certain amount of privilege and security during those meetings. You have told me directly that you are not a Republican, that you're a revolutionary. So, I think it should be pretty obvious that your purposes here are different than most of us, not all. So you're, you're, you're quoting stuff as if you know the meaning, right? But you're inaccurate. Right? Both of these are not slide Thank you. You have a problem. Okay. Also, we can have a court on U Street. It does write as a, a IV file on YouTube. I know I have a U Street channel.
indications as to what our statements were, those sorts of things, and, 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 and it be out and available for the public. We are available to the public, but we are a private organization, and, uh, and therefore I think it's reasonable to have a process to uh, be able to speak to the motions comfortably and then have them posted as minutes. Thank you. And I call for the question. I'll give the National Freedom an opportunity to speak to that. One other one.
stream is for my first summer tech. And also it's gonna be interesting when I have the cops show up because I'm quite out the boss that I'm about to do. And they can't send me out because I'm gonna put them in the front seat and start the party. So I